Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Monday, which means another episode of Movies from A to Z. And before I start that, let me show you this cool t-shirt I got in the mail today. Check this out. Yeah, right, Mike. Dave Brubeck, time out. Any fans of Dave Brubeck out there? Huh? Anybody? Show of hands? Nobody? Well, why not? What's wrong with you? All right, so today we're doing the letter S, and this is The Strawberry Statement from 1970, an American film, which I had never never seen until recently. I, I picked it up from the videobeat.com. Once again, a great source for uh, obscure films that nobody ever heard of, <clears throat> except me. <laughs> so, this movie, the story takes place at a fictional college in San Francisco, and that's where most of the on-location filming was done. It also filmed at, a, I guess, a college, uh, Stockton College in, in Stockton, California. So, uh, Bruce Davison, who a year later would go on to be turn, turn into a character named Willard, another film I've never seen, um, Bruce Davison plays a college kid named Simon, who was just kind of an average kid. Uh, he's happy to be at college. He's, he's not terribly political at all and he's on the college rowing team which is kind of a jock thing to do but he's not really a jock so he's just an average guy and he finds himself being pulled into the radical protest movement at the college the 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 central theme of what's going on in the story is supposedly the college has closed a park that was in a, an african-american neighborhood where little kids were uh, playing and they've closed this property because they want to build an ROTC facility on that property. So all the, the radicals in the school, a lot of the students, they're up in arms and they start a protest and they decide to occupy the administration building. So it turns out to be kind of a, seems like sort of a ragtag group of kids who are being led by a, a central group of more dedicated radicals and more and more kids are being pulled into this movement because they, they are against what the university is doing. And of course, at, back then, as now, unfortunately, uh, the, the police are always the bad guys. The police are made to look very bad in this film. Um, so Simon gets pulled into this gradually. And one of the things that makes him want to get more involved is he, he meets this beautiful young girl named Linda, played by Kim Darby, who was very radical. And he starts listening to her and to what the other people are saying. And as more and more things happen in the film, he becomes very radicalized by the end. Now, the film takes kind of a, a romantic, sort of a lighthearted view of what's going on. There's a, there are little bits of comedy. There's romance um, as the film goes on. But as Simon gets more radicalized, the film becomes very serious and very dark. And the ending is... Um, very intense, very violent, a little bit hard to watch, quite frankly. But yeah, it, it's a good it's a good film. I remember reading about this, even though I never saw it, saying that it wasn't a very good film, which kind of turned me off to ever wanting to see it. But now that I have seen it, my my opinion is very positive. So, if you have any interest at all in what was going on uh, in colleges during that time, if you lived in that time, this is a, a film you might want to see. Very very well done. Now, it was directed by a guy named Stuart, yeah, Stuart, Stuart Hagerman, who uh, didn't seem to have a lot of credits. I mean, he had mostly uh, a short list of TV credits, and this may have been his only film. And as I said, we have Bruce Davison and Kim Darby. Other names you might recognize in the film is uh, Bob Balaban, uh, Bud Court, who was in Harold and Maud, and Brewster McCloud, he's in this one. And we also have James Coco, a very small part, as a, a grocery guy who donates food to the to the radicals so they can stay in the building. Um, and we also have, if, for those of you who remember Fellini's Eight and a Half, there was a character in there. One of the most memorable memorable characters in that film is a woman named Sara Gina, the the big voluptuous woman who danced on the beach and turned on all the kids. She is in this movie, Edric Gale, who played that character. She is in this movie, looking totally unlike uh, Saragina, but it was it was really get great to see her. So it was kind of fun. Lots of interesting music at the time. Um, 
we have the, the theme of the film is The Circle Game, which is a song written by Joni Mitchell. In this case, sung by Buffy St. Marie, who is not one of my favorite singers from that era, but uh, still a great song, very appropriate to what's happening in the movie. We also have uh, John Lennon's Give Peace a Chance, which is sung by, not by John Lennon, but by the protesters as they're occupying the building right at the end of the film. And that, that's part of the, the very intense uh, part of the movie. We also have a song by Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young called Helpless. We have uh, little snippets of Crosby, Stills & Nash doing uh, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. And we also have uh, a song by, um, let's see, Thunderclap Newman, a song called Something in the Air, which is a really terrific song, very appropriate for the time. And a couple of songs by Neil Young. One is called The Loner and the other is called Down by the River. And uh, lots of good photography in the film. It takes advantage of the, the weirdness of San Francisco. You know, the streets that start out like this, and then suddenly they're going down that way and then go a block and then they're going up this way again. So very cool scene where um, Simon and Linda have gone to this grocery store to pick up a bunch of food and they're taking this shopping cart, which is filled up with sacks of food, and they're trying to push it down one of the hills without losing it. So that's actually kind of funny. Uh, there's also a very cool scene when Simon and Linda go into a record store and it looks like uh, authentic, you know, on the real life footage of, of a record store back then with posters all over the place and a listening room where you can put on uh, earphones and and listen um so anyway a lot of cool stuff in this movie and i highly recommend it i, I really enjoyed watching it and yeah, it was very moving although i was i wasn't involved in protests in the late 60s uh and, and early 70s later on in the 70s i got involved with some, some political stuff not not heavily involved i was certainly never a radical but some of the things really rang true for me for one thing when this, this sit-in, this occupation of this building was beginning, all these kids were trying to figure out, okay, who's going to lead this? Who's going to do what? And they got this, this young kid who was trying to get people to vote on whether or not to take a vote. I mean, just that kind of chaos and confusion. And I've been to some meetings like that where it, it gets so disorganized and so crazy and all the, all the personalities start clashing with each other that nothing gets done. And it's very frustrating. So a lot of it rang true for me. It brought back a lot of memories. Good film, The Strawberry Statement. And uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you've seen this. And as Ian always says that I always say, comments are welcome.